Anna is going to share her seemingly miraculous and unexpected method for training for long distance running by way of yoga. And everybody. Two years ago, I couldn't do that. Two years ago, I also couldn't run as fast as I can now. I'm not saying that you have to be able to do Ekapada Viparita Dandasana, aka one-legged inverted staff pose, in order to be a faster runner. However, if you do yoga, you will run faster. <laughs> Let's just get this straight right off the bat. I was not, not in any way an extraordinarily flexible child. I worked really hard to get this way. While I was growing up, my mom and sister, both of whom were gymnasts, would make fun of me for being the not flexible one. One track season in high school, I decided enough was enough, I will be flexible, and I kind of thought that stretching might help my running. So every day I got out my Destiny's Child CD and I would stretch to that. <laughs> However, it was not until I ran track and cross country for the University of Notre Dame that I found out how truly yoga could help my running. At Notre Dame, I was a walk-on in a class of 14 incoming freshmen. However, by my senior year, we were down to four runners of our original class. I was the only non-recruit left. At Notre Dame, in my senior year of cross country, I was all Big East, and in my last race for the Fighting Irish here, I was the first runner from our team to cross the line. Before college, my 5K PR was 2016. At Notre Dame, I ran a 17.11. Much of the success I attribute to yoga. I became hooked on yoga when I was an injured college runner. I had horrible problems with my IT band that would crop up during track season, mostly from running uh, the one direction around a circle. I could switch directions, warm up and cool down, all I wanted to no avail. Your IT band is this band of fascia running from about your hip to your knee. It's not a muscle, so it has no stretch receptors. You have to rely on feeling the stretch in all the muscles surrounding it. Every night before I went to sleep, I did Ekapada Raja Kapatasana, AKA pigeon pose. This is also the first yoga pose that I learned the name for in Sanskrit. From there, I developed my own little mini yoga stretching routine. Most of it based just on what worked in my body and what felt right before and after running. I'd like to think this also evolved in a way from my even early body awareness back in high school listening to Destiny's Child. <laughs> At college, my coach had us all stretch as a group after our warm up before we'd all go out on our run. At a certain point, I had my own little extra stretches that I'd very quickly try to add to the end of this without anyone noticing before we'd go out for our run. I'm sure my coach noticed, and I'm sure at a certain point that he said, <laughs> and is really holding us up here with all of her little extra stretches. I might as well just have everyone do this. <laughs> Lo and behold, the seeds of my yoga teaching career were planted. I led team stretching that year. I believe it's also no coincidence we were much less injured that year too, so this is after winning our first Big East Outdoor Championship. One of my teammates said to me, Anne, you should be a yoga teacher. I really loved leading team stretching, and I had become sort of this go-to guru for my teammates' various running-related stretching questions. So before beginning my PhD here at UVA, I became certified as a 200-hour registered yoga teacher. While earning my PhD at UVA, I also taught 579 yoga classes, most of them in our facilities, the AFC and North Grounds. I still teach there, so you can still come to my class. I've realized that 579 yoga classes perhaps sounds like an exorbitant amount to be teaching <laughs> while also earning a PhD. However, I also attribute my very short time to degree largely to yoga. Five years for a PhD in English is also just about as fast as you can do that. Yoga may help you to be a faster runner, but it also helps you to be faster and more efficient mentally, whether you're reading or writing or running. Post-collegiately, yoga has helped my running more than ever. It's one thing to be a fast runner in college when you have the direct support of a university. You have buses to take you to all your meets. You have coaching staff, training staff. It's another thing to try to be fast after college when you're pretty much all on your own. Since about January 2013, I've dropped my weekly mileage to what most runners would consider a laughably low, unserious level in the 30 to 35 mile a week range. For comparison, in college, I ran 50 to 60 miles a week, 
most elite women runners are in the 60 or 70 to 100 mile a week range. So using this unconventional training of very low running mileage with the addition of about an hour of yoga a day, I've run PRs for the non-runners. PR is runner speak for personal record. I've run PRs in the past nine months in distances, including the mile, four mile, 8K, road 10K, half marathon, and marathon. So that goes from mile to marathon. I've also been able to race much more frequently than ever before in my entire life. In 2014, I ran a total of 43 races, 27 of which I also won, and I did no running workouts outside of this with the exception of occasional harder hour-long run. If you had sat me down two years ago and said, Anne, you're going to beat all your best times from college, I would have really wanted to believe you, but I would not have believed you. So where is all this going? Last summer, I also ran a, a four mile in 22.30. So that's 5.37 pace. That's way faster than I ran in college. And I broke the five minute mile here. So it was slightly downhill, but I'm definitely counting that. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, uh, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, you know, if running can be helped this much by yoga, then why aren't more runners doing yoga? One day, as I stretched on the sidelines of the track at Notre Dame, I struck up a conversation with Coach Piani, legendary Notre Dame men's track and cross country coach. He led the men's team for a consecutive 39 seasons. Coach Piani is the man, and I'm pretty sure I remember any word of encouragement or advice I ever got from him. So I'm there stretching after the workout, and I'm telling Coach Piani, stretching has helped my running so much. Coach Piani's response, race horses don't stretch. I told him in reply, we usually don't put cross-country runners out to pasture at the end of our careers either. <laughs> <laughs> the point in general is, runners overlook just how much yoga can help them move more efficiently, effectively, fluidly, faster, recover faster when they are running. The running community has not entirely discovered yoga, but they need to because there's more runners out there than ever before. I remember the first time I came to visit Charlottesville, I was driving around the car with my mom, and it was so weird. There were runners just all over the place. <laughs> um, so there's, there's a ton of runners in Charlottesville, too. So this is now my obligatory TED Talk statistic moment. So the 2013 Running USA annual report, there were a record 541,000 marathon finishers in 2013. There was a record 1,100 marathons held. Over the past 25 years, US marathons with more than 1,000 finishers has increased 360%, from about 20 in 1989, 292 in 2013. If you look at the finisher totals for the New York Marathon or really any other marathon, major marathon out there, they aren't going down, they're going up every year. Everyone wants to run a marathon. So the world has all these brand new runners, all these new runners who should be doing yoga too to help them with their primary sport so they can do that successfully and continue to run. While in grad school, I also founded Runners Love Yoga, the mission of which is to bring yoga to the running community. So if you are a runner, I want you to be doing yoga too. How does yoga actually help running? Two main points here. So the first is injury prevention through increased mobility and increased strength, especially core strength. The second is knowing your own body in a very more nuanced, specific way than someone who doesn't do yoga. So point one, you know, if you have to pick one yoga stretch to do as a runner, it needs to be pigeon pose. So the one I demonstrate at the beginning. So I'm going to actually show you how to do this. So uh, you get yourself into a low lunge. Both of your hands are on the inside edge of your front foot. You think of pressing your arm into your leg, leg into your arm. Stay here, or if it feels comfortable, bring your uh, closest forearm onto a block or a cushion. And maybe both forearms come onto the floor. Stay here a minute or so, keep breathing. And then you pick up your elbow, palm, or move whatever you put your forearm on. Heel toe your foot across the front of your mat, and ta-da, you're in pigeon pose, and then walk your hands forward. So especially if you have any sort of IT band trouble, that can help you with that. If you pick two more poses to do, the second one is actually a movement between two, so going from a low lunge into a half split. And if you have to pick a third one, it should be some kind of back bend. So this is four-footed pose here. This is a variation of bridge pose, where your shoulder blades are tucked under your back even a little more, and you're grabbing your ankles. So notice you're even thinking of sending your hips to the ceiling, but you're also rolling your chest forward towards your chin. So I mentioned core strength. If there's one way to maybe get 
runners or the masses on board with doing more yoga is through the argument that yoga gives you a stronger core. Who doesn't want stronger abs? <laughs> I just finished hosting a uh, abs core challenge on the Runners Love Yoga Instagram, so you should check that out because every other month I'm featuring a new thing there. And now I'm actually going to teach you one of the exercises that you can do from seated here. So this was in the challenge. So uh, watch out for your neighbor. Bring your hands into goalpost arms. And then take your right elbow under your left. Good. And then if you can, don't worry if this doesn't happen, try to cross your hands into prayer. And then press your elbows away from you. You already might be feeling that between your shoulder blades. This is a really good thing you can do at your desk. And then move your elbows up and down any way you want. So this is a really good one, too, to, uh, you know, I tell people listen to their body. So I feel this more when I'm at about parallel to up here. That is more intense than this. So this also becomes a core movement. So again, you want to flip around, make sure you're even. Good. <laughs> so when you're lying down, you can do those same arms. So find your goalpost arms. You don't have to do the lying down part right now. <laughs> and then cross your right thigh over left. Maybe tuck your toes behind your calf. This is basically a reclining version of eagle pose, good cleansing pose for your limbs. On your inhale, toes touch the floor, fingers touch the floor over your head. On your exhale, round up, elbows to knees, shoulder blades up off the mat. Inhale, roll down, tap. Exhale, round up. Inhale, roll down. Exhale, round up. So you get the idea. So you can see yoga core is a lot more interesting than just doing a thousand bicycle crunches or literally holding a plank until you fall over. So you're also getting the mental benefits <laughs> of a yoga practice along with that. So point two, knowing your own body. Chances are the first time you walk into a yoga class, your teacher is going to say, inhale and do this, exhale and do that. And you're going to be coordinating your movement with your breath. This might feel at first very unusual to you. But after a while, this becomes intuitive. It makes sense to you to move and breathe as you're moving in a very specific way. This gives you just generally much better body awareness than you would have if you didn't do yoga. So this allows you, you know, if you're sitting down in a car on a road trip and you get out of your car, you're like, oh, I feel tight. You're going to know how to fix that in a way that a non-yogi will not know how to fix themselves. This also teaches you patience in the long term, too. So... Chances are, you know, when you walk into yoga class on the first or the thousandth time, there's going to be poses you can't do. You quickly learn to be okay with this. This is kind of the fun of it. Rather than being frustrating, it's refreshing because you never reach this end point. And because you can't, you know, you are okay with that. It's different than in running. In running, you want to be as fast as you can, as fast as you possibly can get that fast. In yoga, you can always get stronger. So it's kind of nice knowing there's always somewhere else to go. There's always some new creative way to put poses together and make it fun for yourself. I think also the mental benefits to yoga are really important too. So learning how to relax, especially as part of a competitive sports type environment. Yoga also helps you to believe in yourself. There's nothing like the first time you do a pose that you thought you couldn't do before or as a yoga teacher, the first time I see someone do a pose they couldn't do. So I'll never forget the first time I did crow pose. Or the first time, you know, you see someone do this in class. This is not something you do on a regular basis. So when you do that, you kind of feel like you can do anything. You believe in yourself. And that carries over really well to running, too. If there's maybe some resistance to yoga and stretching within the running community, sometimes this also goes the other way around, where you get... Yogis who feel like runners, they're all masochists who love destroying their bodies with that repetitive motion. But if you take a runner and introduce them to yoga, they have distinct advantages over someone who doesn't run and comes to yoga. Runners already know how to focus and meditate in two very specific and very different ways. So if you're in a race or if you're in a hard workout, you know how to physically push yourself and how to focus to make sure you get that goal accomplished. So if you're coming into the home stretch of race and there's someone right behind you, you know how to kick that into gear. Second, you know how to meditate already. You're out on a long run. As a runner, you're okay with being alone with your own thoughts. This is fairly uncommon in this day and age. <laughs> so if you aren't yet a runner, I'm a little biased, but you should be. If you're already a runner, you should be doing yoga too. You might just find yourself a little less injured, a little more able to run consistently, 
a lot stronger, a lot happier, and faster. Do yoga, run faster. Thank you. <laughs>